G'day guys, this is my video for some DIY storage on your Mitsubishi Pajero. Uh, it's for the Series 4 that where the uh, back seats fold into the underneath the floor pan. Uh, you'll start by getting a Phillips head screwdriver and undoing the little screw that holds the plastic in place. Uh, that's normally where your seats bolt, uh, bolt into and then you'll need a 14 millimeter socket to take those bars out that it actually clicks onto. A 10 mil will undo the little bolt that holds your cargo restraints in. There's four of them in total. Once you pull them out there'll be a hole left. You'll want to measure one centimeter from in from the back of the hole and we're going to get a razor blade and cut it across. So the flat level section closest to the back of the car and then measure one centimetre forward and then get your razor blade and cut it from there across across to the other side. I've got a photo to show you. So that's the razor blade and uh, so there's two holes at the back, that's my cargo barrier looking in from the back of the car and I've just measured and marked one centimetre forward of the uh, of the hole or the back side of the hole which that's probably the picture that describes it best and you're going to cut that uh, floor lining all the way across including the padding and vacuum it all out because uh, if it's like mine it's been sitting there for years it's there'll be sand and fruit loops and all kinds of shit under there so okay so at Bunnings <clears throat> I got these uh, sheets of plywood uh, you'll only need one uh, they're 1.1 meters wide and 90 centimeters long. Um, you're going to have to measure from wheel arch to wheel arch and cut it to width. It doesn't matter if it hangs out too long, like in this picture, because we're going to cut it to shape. So uh, just mark on one side, just with a pencil, uh, mark where your plastic meets the carpet. That's probably a well, it's not really a good photo, but it's a better view. So where the plastic meets the carpet, just mark with a pencil. And uh, go across to the other side and mark it as well. Now, this isn't a straight cut. It's actually curved. So what we're going to do is grab the... Uh, there's that flappy carpet thing that um, normally goes on top of the seats when they fold under. You're going to use that because it's curved. Put it put it on your marks and then mark it with a pencil so that you get the perfect curve. So again you just put that on top make sure your pencil marks line up with the each end and then hold it in, get someone to hold it in place and mark it across with a pencil. When you're cutting your plywood, um, that's just a test cut to show you, um, you're going to want to use some painters tape and put it over the top of your plywood and uh, the type that you can see through the, the tape and then cut it with your jigsaw otherwise you'll get a feathered edge that's one, a cut with the with the tape in place and then I followed the pencil mark and it's a much smoother cut so a lot of it didn't splinter away like in the original photo next I measure my fridge which is important to me because the fridge is going to sit on the left hand side of of this and I want to make sure that my little uh, my little hatch that I'm going to cut uh, is going to be able to open. So I measure that, you can measure that to the size of your fridge. Then go back to the car and on the right hand side you're going to measure in six centimeters and then put your hinge in place and then this is on the sort of the middle of the car where the, um, the floor will be solid where it meets the, the door that we're going to make you are got to measure in six centimeters from there and put the other hinge so they're equally placed on the lid. Obviously uh, the hinge sticks up there but I'll show you we're going to recess that so it's flat. Uh, I find it easier to drill the holes first so uh, put your hinge in place, mark it with a pencil and drill your holes. If you do it after you're going to have two bits of moving wood and it's not going to be perfect so do it while it's still the wood still joint together. Once you cut that section out that we've marked, uh, that's when you get your chisel and recess out the where the uh, hinge hump is, so that the hinge is actually going to be recessed and flat against the floor. 
so that your luggage and things won't get caught on it and damaged. Uh, I also bought a from Bunnings a little um, latch um, that you can just stick your finger in and grab the, the door so that you can lift it up properly. I've marked it because I'm going to recess it as well so that it's all flat with the floor and no, nothing's going to catch on it. So I cut, I get the pencil, I marked out the shape of the inside of it, doesn't matter which one you grab, Bunnings sell about 50 different types of latches so you can just uh, measure out the shape of yours and have a look at the width of it like in this photo. I think this one was 4 millimeters deep uh, which is quite a, a thick piece of metal so that's how much I have to recess down with a chisel. So I drilled three holes where you can see pretty clearly there where I drilled the holes and then I just jigsawed the rest out. Then I used the chisel to um, cut out, recess the remaining amount of wood that I needed so that it's going to sit nice and flat. And that's a very tedious process because you don't want to, if you if you go too hard with the chisel you're going to wreck the wood because they're not that thick. Um, I think I used 9mm thick plywood so, but that's it anyway once it's uh, screwed in place with the hinges and the latch and everything's level flat with the floor. Now uh, if you've got child restraints go ahead and screw the bolts in where your child restraints would normally be bolted in but don't actually click the the um, little uh, latch in place just just screw the bolts in put the wood on top that um, the new false floor that we're making and give it a light tap with a the hammer then pull it out and you'll see that the bolt has made an imprint on the plywood and that's where we're going to punch a hole through uh, we're going to drill it so um, that's the underside didn't use tape here so uh, it did splinter but uh, that's the underside of where the child restraint bolt is going to go through that ensures that your uh, car stays safe this stuff here a uh, cabothane clear um, is going to be sprayed I just got a spray version that's going to be sprayed onto the plywood it seals the wood so that I can paint it if I don't paint it the wood the paint won't seal nicely so I, I spray the cabothane clear and then I've I've painted it with black paint which I'll show in the next photo it's really important to seal the wood so don't skimp there just just spend the 10 bucks get that cabothane clear and it'll last way longer I use Dulux metal shield which I know is for metal but it works really well uh, on wood as long as it's it's sealed uh, because it's really durable and it's self priming so uh, use that and uh, a foam roller. I just foam rolled that straight on and uh, I did it outside the car and let it dry and then I put the floor back in just to double check um, all the clearances and that. But um, it gives quite a nice finish, not too glossy, it's like a satin finish. I also went to the local bolt supplies shop and got upgraded bolts for my child's um, restraints. So they're uh, grade 8 and uh, they're suitable for replacing the original child restraint bolt because the false floor is thicker, the bolt needs to be longer and that's the false floor pretty much finished um, now the whole purpose of this is that you've got that huge space underneath where your seats normally fold under so you remove them you make this floor and then when you've got all your camping gear in the back uh, you can still have your fridge there and access the space underneath You'll see the cargo restraint there in the top right corner uh, bolted in the carpet. That helps um, secure the floor in place as well. So once you put screw that cargo restraint back in, it actually really locks it down. And because I'm a little bit OCD, I've pulled the corner carpet pieces out, which are still there, and I just vacuum. I'm just showing you there that I've pulled it out, and um, you just vacuum under it and that, and clean it up. While I had the foam roller and the metal shield paint out I thought I'm, I'll blacked out my um, badges because I reckon black on black looks gangster um, so yeah I just got the foam roller and literally rolled over the Pajero badge there so this is the finished product um, what I did I went to Bunnings for $14 you can get one of these barbecue mats they're heat proof and uh, quite abrasive proof as well so I've overlaid that over the top which is kind of cool because uh, let's say your car got broken into, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that there's a hidden compartment under here. 
unless you lifted that up. And just got all the gear in there. It's such a massive space now if the fridge sits on this left side. Still be able to access everything inside. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. And uh, if you've got any comments below, be happy to hear them. Thanks.